everyone and welcome to it. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Alexa Ray. For today's video, we are doing another reading vlog and we are reading a very highly requested book on my channel, Verity by Colleen Hoover. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I don't think I'm ready for this. This is definitely way out of my comfort zone. I usually read rom-coms and like cheesy romance books. So this is going to be very new to me. This is actually considered like a romance thriller. I'm nervous to say the least. I'm just not ready for like the suspense and the plot twist and the scary aspect of it because I don't do well with scary things. This is going to be a very interesting read. I'm really excited. You guys say it is amazing. I thought it'd be really cool to do something a little bit different today and do something a little out of my comfort zone and try a thriller type of book. So who knows? Maybe this will go really well and I'll want to read more thrillers and mystery books or worst case scenario, I read it, I cry and I never want to read something like this again. Just look at this book cover. It looks so creepy. Like, look at those legs. As always, this is going to be a spoiler-free reading vlog. No spoilers the entire video, but of course, at the very end, I will add in a spoiler section where we can talk about things that happen in the book. This was a recommendation by you guys, so as always, thank you so much. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Recommend all the books you want, guys. You guys have not steered me wrong yet. I love all your recommendations so far. Now we're on to Verity, a completely different genre for me. You guys have not steered me wrong yet, so I'm trusting you. I feel like this is gonna be a good one. It's kind Hoover. Lo and Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts the job offer of a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford, has hired Lowen to complete the remaining books and in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. Lowen arrives at the Crawford home ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. What Lowen doesn't expect to uncover is the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Could you imagine that? Like, you're on your deathbed and then some stranger comes into your home and goes through like all your stuff? Page after page, bone-chilling admissions including Verity's recollection of the night her family was forever altered. Lowen decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents can devastate the already grieving father. But as Lowen's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, she recognizes all the ways she could benefit if he were to read his wife's words. What is she doing? Falling in love with a dying woman's husband. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue loving her. I bet she killed someone or something. I bet something super scandalous like that happened. I guarantee it. We're gonna jump right into this reading vlog. I'm so nervous. I am so nervous. I always hate reading a brand new book because I don't want to ruin the spine and I know I'm going to. So like, catch me reading like this. This book is dedicated to the only person this book could possibly be dedicated to. Taryn Fisher. Thank you for accepting the darkness in people as much as you accept their light. Aw, that's so sweet. I love reading author's dedications because I feel like they're so cute. Chapter one. I hear the crack of his skull before the spattering of blood reaches. Okay, that's enough for today. Okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What a great way to start the book. I'm really not used to these types of books, guys. Bear with me. I closed my eyes before his head went under the tire, but I heard it pop like the cork of a champagne bottle. Really? So, chapter one, I don't like it because immediately it starts with death. But we meet the main characters, Lowen and Jeremy. I really want to know how they come back together. Basically what happened is Lowen was on her way to work and she had witnessed a tragic accident and Jeremy had happened to be there as well and he helped her clean up and like made sure she was okay. It got really weird really fast. We find out that Lowen had just lost her mom to cancer and Jeremy had lost his daughter a few months prior, so it's really sad. This is like a really heavy first chapter and we're not even like deep in the story yet. But we've met the main characters, Jeremy and Lowen, and now hopefully we find out how they are going to come back together because as of right now they're just two strangers that met in the wrong place at the wrong time and experienced a very tragic accident together, so... So Lowen is a writer. She's a meeting with her publisher and stuff and apparently they have like a really cool offer for her and all this stuff. And she gets to the building and someone in line comments on her shirt 
and it's Jeremy. Jeremy's in line behind her. I'm guessing this might be where Jeremy comes into play with Lowen, and they probably, this must be where they have the meeting together. Nice shirt, someone behind me says. I turn at the sound of Jeremy's voice, shocked to see him. Is he following me? It's my turn in line, so I hand the security guard my driver's license and then look at Jeremy, taking in the new shirt he's wearing. Do you keep spare shirts in your back pocket? It hasn't been that long since he's given me the one off his back. My hotel is a block away. Walked back to change. His hotel, that's promising. If he's staying in a hotel, maybe he doesn't work here. No, I don't work here. I have a meeting on the 14th floor. Of course he does. So do I, I say. Yeah, so they're definitely meeting together. I'm getting like this really flirtatious vibe from him. Even though he's married and Lowen knows that he's married because she noticed the wedding ring on his finger. Are you a writer, he asks. I not, are you? No, my wife is. He pulls out his tie until it's secured in place. Have you written anything I would know? I doubt it. No one reads my books. There aren't many Lowens in the world. I'm sure I can figure out which books you've written. Why? Does he actually want to read them? He looks down at his phone and begins to type. I never said I write under my real name. He doesn't look up from his phone until the elevator doors open. He moves towards them, turning in the doorway to face me. He holds up his phone and smiles. You don't write under a pen name. You write under Lowen Ashley, which funny enough is the name of the author I'm meeting at 930. I'm sure it's not like meant to be flirtatious, but it seems a little flirty to me. I don't know. But Lowen's definitely attracted to him because the next line is, I finally get that smile. And as gorgeous as it is, I don't want it anymore. I can't believe he just like Googled her right there and then to see like what she wrote. Spicy. So chapter two was a really long chapter. I hate when chapters are that long because I get so tired. Basically, Jeremy wants Lowen to come and finish up his wife's last three books because she is unable to. Yeah, that's basically what chapter two was all about. There seems to be like this weird tension between Jeremy and Lowen. I feel like they like each other. Also, I don't really like Corey. He just seems like really full of himself and stuck up and I don't really like him. Corey, who is Lowen's agent, thinks that it's really weird that Verity got into a car accident and he almost makes it seem like he's inferring that Jeremy had something to do with it. And so that's really creepy. But Lowen assures him that she's done her research and they were all accidents. But nonetheless, it seems like the family has a lot of bad luck around them which is kind of scary but she is now on her way to go stay at the house so she can go through Verity's like notes and files and work so she can get started on the books. I don't know something seems kind of like fishy and off about it but now we're on to chapter four. So Lowen just arrived she's in her car and there's a kid staring into her window is kind of creepy. It's like a really weird vibe. Oh, this must be their son. This is Verity and Jeremy's son. Still real weird vibe though. <laughs> I'm only a few feet behind him when he opens the front door and walks into the house then closes the door in my face. I wait a moment wondering if maybe he has a sense of humor but I can see through the frosted window of the front door and he continues through the house and doesn't come back to let me in. I don't want to call him an asshole. He's a little kid and he's been through a lot but I think he might be an asshole. <laughs> So Lowen's staying in the master bedroom because they don't sleep in anymore, probably because of all the tragedy they've had, and she noticed that there's bite marks in their headboard. Why are there bite marks? I'm getting such a creepy, eerie vibe. This is not fun so far. <laughs> wow. So Lowen is in Verity's office. She's finally starting to like go through things and like go through her laptop, her papers. She's basically trying to find an outline for the books that she has to finish in the series. She came across something a little bit different and it turns out to be an autobiography that Verity had written. She has come across Verity's autobiography. I feel like this is where it's gonna get like really crazy. And so so I just finished up chapter four and instead of starting out on chapter five, I'm now reading Verity's autobiography, I guess. Um, it's called So Be It. This is what it looks like. We're going to read all about Verity's life throughout the entire book, probably see how it leads up to current time. This is really intriguing. I just want to know like what happens next. I still don't know about Jeremy yet. Like I like Jeremy, but I feel like I shouldn't trust him. It's hard because like you want to like him. He's very cute 
cute and nice and helpful, but because there's so much tragedy around him, it makes you wonder if you can like trust him. We're on to So Be It by Verity Crawford, which is her autobiography, and there's like an author's note in the beginning, and she says, one should only walk away from an autobiography with, at best, an uncomfortable distaste for its author. And she's basically talking about how she thinks autobiographies should be completely raw. Authors who write them to make people like them more, it's just fake. She's like basically warning readers that this is gonna be super real and they'll probably walk away from it feeling uncomfortable. Joke's on you, I'm already uncomfortable. What you read will taste so bad at times you'll want to spit it out, but you'll swallow these words and they will become part of you. Part of your gut and you will hurt because of them. Guys, I'm scared. <laughs> okay, so that was just like the author's note to readers. Now we're on to chapter one of her autobiography. Find what you love and let it kill you. Charles Bukowski. On the bright side, I love the layout of this. Oh my god. So the first chapter of Verity's autobiography about her and Jeremy and how they met and basically like their love story. I haven't read anything too creepy or scary just yet. Literally, I just mentioned how I haven't read anything creepy in like a hot minute and immediately I just read something so creepy. Literally just jinxed myself. In chapter 5, Lauren had been hearing like this really weird noise upstairs coming from Verity's room and naturally she just assumed the worst but quickly turned into a false alarm because jeremy showed up behind her and explained what the noise was and then they shared pizza in the kitchen talking to each other there's just like this weird sexual tension i feel like i'm like so conflicted and confused right now because i like love jeremy's character but something's off like i just know there's something wrong here and there's something up with verity too something is just not right and i can feel it in my gut. Something is really weird. Lowen's in Verity's office like going through Verity's papers and work and she just glances out the window and Verity's outside in her wheelchair just staring at her. Oh my god. Guys that's getting creepy. Like there's always like within the chapters there's always like two or three sentences that just creep me the f out and like crew is so cute like he's just a five-year-old boy we all know like in the movies and stuff like the kids are always like the creepiest and they're always the first to interact with like the creepy things going on that's like what's happening right now i think it's getting so good for a second because it's like super cute and sweet and then it just like hits me with like some creepy crap it's like i forget for a second that i'm like reading like a thriller type of book lowen is so spooked out right now and it's ruining the vibe for me because she's spooking me out guys like she makes me feel like when i was little and like i always thought they were like monsters under the bed or something there's this movie with kate hudson in it it's called the skeleton key it's pretty old i think it's like 2007 or something it kind of gives me like a similar vibe to it not really but it's like kind of similar this is getting so messed up on so many levels. Can't even comprehend what I just read because it's that messed up. So all I'm gonna say is that I'm having really mixed feelings about Verity now. In the beginning of this section, I was kind of like, okay, like, I get it. I'm sure, like, so many people have, like, the same thoughts. And then it just took, like, the craziest turn ever, and I'm just like, oh, you're a horrible person. I just, I don't know how to feel right now. Besides really confused and disturbed. I feel like after reading that chapter, it kind of like makes me suspicious of certain characters and makes me want to point fingers at certain characters for certain like events that have happened. I don't know. This is just getting really twisted really fast. So Lowen and Jeremy, oh my gosh look at my hair it's all frazzled because of this book. Jeremy took Lowen to Target with him to grab a few things. It's just it's heating up. I feel like it's getting kind of spicy. Not that like Jeremy is flirting with her. By all means, he's not flirting with her. He is just such a gentleman and such a great guy and Lowen isn't used to that type of treatment. Excuse me. He wants to read with us. They're at Target right now and they're no personal space with cats. Crew just got hurt. Lowen like ran upstairs to take care of him and help him out and then Jeremy came upstairs to see what happened and also like make sure that Crew's okay and he asked Lowen to go back in the bedroom and look for something that was there and it wasn't there. And she even looked like under the nightstand and under the bed. When she went to get up, Verity was staring at her. 
so creepy and i'm just like my emotions are everywhere right now i like don't know what to think i don't know what to believe but of course loan is now picking up verity's autobiography after like three or four chapters because she promised herself she wouldn't read any more after reading the horrifying last one obviously we knew that was gonna be a lie she's now picking it up we're on chapter four of the autobiography i don't know what to think or what to expect with this guys but we're just gonna keep going and see what happens <laughs> Okay guys, we just finished like a really intense chapter. Loen was going through like more papers and stuff in Verity's office and she found like a huge box with like a bunch of pictures in it and she decided to like go through it for whatever reason. I think she was thinking that maybe it'd help her with writing and like getting to know Verity better. I didn't think she should do that but she did it anyways and then Jeremy walked in and they were going through the pictures together and talking. Crew walked in and he was so upset to see all the pictures out on the table so he got very upset and Jeremy had to like pick him up and like go upstairs to like calm him down. I mean rightfully so. I mean he's five years old and he's gone through a lot of tragedy in his lifetime already so but there was a moment in the kitchen between Jeremy and Loen that was just very spicy. Loen just woke up in Verity's bed and now Jeremy is comforting her saying that it's okay and that it's not a big deal and she shouldn't worry about it but it seems like this is like a pretty important moment in the book because I feel like we're gonna find out more about Loen and like her past and childhood because it seems like it had like a very traumatic toll on her. This is crazy but also her and Jeremy. What's going on? So Loen has a lock on the inside of her door to lock at night before she goes to bed and Jeremy just offered to put a lock on the outside of her bed to lock at night and then he'll open it in the mornings for her. Loen and Jeremy keep having like these little moments that are super cute but like nothing comes out of it obviously because he's a married man and she's just there to write the three remaining books of his wife's work. He tells her that her work is amazing and that it matters and it's just like the cutest seen ever in the entire book. I feel like Loen's super insecure the entire time about her writing and just like herself in general and Jeremy like tells her like no your work's really great and that you shouldn't be insecure and it matters so I thought that was really cute but now we are on to chapter 9 of Verity's autobiography. I honestly don't like reading her autobiography because it's just so twisted. Okay guys do we think Verity is faking it? Or do we think it's real? Because I think she's faking it. I don't even know what to say right now. Like, this is insane. I am so, like, confused. Not about what's happening, but, like, emotionally I'm confused. Like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Where is this book going? And, like, I really love Jeremy's character, but I can't help but feel that, like, something twisted is gonna happen at the end with him. Jeremy and Loen are locked in her bedroom, and I'm pretty sure it's because of Verity. I am unwell. I, like, don't know if I can finish this book right now. Yesterday, we started this book, and we finished it, like, in one sitting. Wow. Just wow. I don't even know where to begin with this to be honest. It just like wasn't what I expected. I do have to say I don't think it was as scary as I thought it would be. Like I'm happy that it wasn't as like scary because I don't like scary things. But it had like just enough to put it in like the thriller category. I could definitely see this being like a film. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I loved the characters. Like the events that she goes through throughout this story, I just don't know how she did it because like if I I was in her shoes I probably wouldn't even be in that position to begin with I just would have not accepted the job offer in the first place because of how weird and spooky the vibe was to begin with I did really enjoy this read it was a little bit out of my comfort zone but nonetheless I thought it was really great I would probably give this a four out of five stars mainly because some of the things in the book I just thought were weird and I didn't agree with in a way I'm not too surprised about what happened in it but at the same time I'm like oh I wish it would have went a 
little bit different. I do think it's great. I think it has the perfect little touch of spooky in it. Overall, it just really has you on your heels the whole time, like wondering what's going to happen next. It is something I would definitely read again, and it's something that I would recommend to people who are trying to get their foot in the door with thriller slash spookier type of reads. This is a really great book. I could see the hype around it. Thank you again to everyone who voted on my polls and recommended me this because it really was such a cool and different read for me, totally out of my comfort zone. So I'm really happy I got the chance to read it. With that being said, we are now going to hop into the spoiler section of this video. So if you haven't read this book at all or in its entirety, don't watch this portion of the video just because we are going to be talking about spoilers and things that happen in this book. You may not want to know before reading it. I guess the main spoiler of the entire book that I really want to talk about is the manuscript and the letter at the end. And I want to know what you guys think. Do you believe the manuscript or do you believe the letter? Because I'm really torn between it. I don't really know what to believe, to be honest. I don't want to believe the manuscript because I don't want to believe how effed up it was. I feel like if she's that crazy to do all those things to her children and be so obsessed with her husband, she wouldn't drive herself into a tree at the end. I find that hard to believe after doing all those crazy twisted things in her life. I just personally don't believe that part of it. It makes a little bit more sense if Jeremy found the manuscript, saw all that messed up stuff, and drove his wife into a tree because he was so upset that she had murdered their daughter and tried to murder them when she was pregnant. That aspect of it makes a little bit more sense, but I just hate to believe that Jeremy would be in the wrong then. Which, like, I know some people are saying they don't think he's in the wrong because, like, any parent would do that if they found out the truth and this and that, but it is still, like, twisted. He should have just, like, reported her to the police instead of, like, trying to murder her. Regardless of both, Verity fakes her injury like a few months, I think. That right there is just so twisted and crazy. Going off of that, I don't know how to feel about Lowen finding the letter and then not telling Jeremy about it or doing anything about it. Like, I understand her thought process. If she were to give the letter to Jeremy, then it would just drive him insane. Possibly his wife didn't actually do all those horrible things he read about her. I also think it's twisted that Jeremy knew about the manuscript and didn't tell Lowen about it. I don't know. It's honestly, it's so confusing and the whole thing is just like driving me crazy because I don't know what to think about any of it. I guess like putting all of that aside, didn't really like the part of how Lowen and Jeremy fell in love throughout this like twisted story. I get it and I did enjoy reading their romance. I just personally didn't like it because it just seemed weird the whole time to me knowing that Lowen was like falling in love with Jeremy. A married man just seemed wrong to me in a way. I don't know. Comment down below what you thought of this, what your thoughts and opinions are. What do you think really happened? Who do you believe? Okay guys, that is all for my reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed reading this book with me. This was such a crazy read. Don't forget to comment down below your opinions and your thoughts on the entire book. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out and it lets me know that you like this type of content, you like the books we read, you like my vibe. Go like the video. Go do it right now. And then of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my vibe, if you like my content. I post weekly guys. I post weekly. It's basically free entertainment every single week. You might as well subscribe. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.